Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan and what I'd like to do today is introduce you all to my Coca-Cola or Coke Financial Report 2021 and so just to give you a little bit of insights <clears throat> uh, for this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all the financial template that I've created um, that, I, and, uh, that I use as a foundation for analyzing Coca-Cola. So this financial model that I've created what I do is I'll re I research Coca-Cola's uh, 10Ks for the last five years. Then I summarize that information, plugged it into my financial model. And the financial model, what it did is it produced, um, you know, it produced some graphs and also it calculated various ratios. And from that information, I went ahead and wrote up the Coca-Cola financial report for 2021. So the purpose of this video is to give you all, all a, you know, backstage look at what the financial model looks like that I use for Coca-Cola. So a couple of things to set y'all's expectations. First and foremost, the temple that I will be showing and sharing with y'all, I do not sell it. I do not provide that with the financial report. This is just to show y'all the work that goes on behind the scenes in creating the Coca-Cola financial report. Also, when I'm, um, when I'm going through the line items for Coca-Cola, I might say that the company is doing fantastic in one segment of their business. And then I might say that the company is not doing so great in a different segment of their business um, based on the financial, um, the financial ratio or the line item in the income statement or balance sheet that's being analyzed. So just keep in mind that there will be, there will be some contradictory statements. <clears throat> Excuse me when I'm going through the financial report and even in this video. Um, so hopefully y'all's expectations are set properly. So let's go ahead and dive into this financial report and you know, let's see what it has in store for us. So one of the first things that I do when I take a look at Coca-Cola is I'm going to take a look at their executive team pay. Uh, so for this James Quincy, the CEO, he's pulling down about $3.03 million from multinational organization that is a solid paycheck it's not too high it's not too um, low either so that that's a solid amount of money that he's pulling down the next his supporting players the ceo vp and cmo they're all making in the, in the you know 1.4 to 1.2 million dollars again these are solid numbers it's not showing that the companies is you know really boosting their pay with the um you know stock options or anything and um, because th that'd be evident if the you know the pay was really low at least based on my experience and my research so based on just the ex executive team pay it looks like the, the company is being their their executive team being compensated well it's not extravagant it's also not lowballed with a lot of stock options so it's a good solid structure it seems like the next thing that we i went ahead and analyzed is, is i took a look at the 52 week stock price so for this model right here, I went from April of 2020 to March of 20, um, 2021. So in this time frame, this was the low, or this is you know, where the, the pandemic really started hitting um, for the U.S. So the stock price was relatively low. And then from that point in time, the company has a continually, has comp continually increased their, um, or the trend that is showing is, is a, a positive trend. So, you know, their, their highs are, you know, continuously higher I and mean, they got bumped right here in, you know, late December, early January. But again, after this bump and whatever caused this bump in the stock price, <clears throat> excuse me, the company has still rebounded and they are continually trending higher. So I like the trend for the stock prices. You know, it, you know, it's, it's still up and down. We've got some fluctuation. We got some room to play with the numbers if that's what your stock strategy is. Um, but is a continuous trend higher, which it is, is a good trend for the investors. Next thing that I take a look at is going to be the dividend payout policy. 2016 dividend payout, dollar forty went to a dollar forty eight, dollar fifty six in 2018, dollar sixteen and nineteen, and then a dollar sixty four in twenty. So the organization is again growing their dividends dollar wise consistently higher, which is good for um, for dividend investors. What I don't like about this, though, is that their growth rate is continually lower. The growth rate in 17 is 57 18 5.4%, 19 2.5%, and then 2.56, and then 22.50%. So yes, the dividends are growing dollar-wise. It's not growing 
percentage wise though and as an investor you're going to be a little bit concerned with that because you know dividends are important part of the investment and your that aspect or that the component of your investment uh, vehicle is is actually not growing as fast as, as some other multinational organizations out there so that's a little bit of a concern um, for investors in my most humble of opinions all right, next is gonna be an income statement. So in my financial report for Coca-Cola, I do take a look at five or six different line items for the income statement. For example, for 2016, Coca-Cola had revenues of $41.8 billion. In 2017, it went down to 36.2 billion. 18, 34 billion. We got a little bit of a bump in 19 to 37 billion. And, but their decline made up for in 2020 to $33 billion. <clears throat> This tells me right here, organization is continuously losing revenues over a sustained period of time. This, my most humble of opinions, the executive team is not understanding the customer's needs. They might have a tried and true product, Coca-Cola Classic. However, that tried and, true tried and true product is losing customers. They're not, in, they, they need to spend more money in research and development, or they need to spend some more money in market research to find out what the consumer trend is going towards, what it is now, and where is it going in the future, and then come up with some products that are going to better meet the needs of their customers. Right now, continuously, the company is not responding to the customer demands based on the revenues, again, in my most humble of opinions. Next thing we'll do is gonna take a look at the balance sheet. Um, for example, the cash position. Cash position 2016, 8.5 billion. This nice little pocket change. 2017 drops down to 6 billion. 18 ups to nine. And then 19 and 20, where it's between 6.4 um, and $6.7 billion. <clears throat> it looks like the company's sweet spot for cash is, at, um, is the mid six, um, $6.5, $6.6 billion. And we've got $6 billion in 17, 19, and 20. So this kind of tells me that the executive team knows what their cash position needs to be. And, you know, in order to, you know, pay their current asset or to pay their current liabilities and uh, still have enough funds to, to be solvent. So it, the executive team, again, in my most humble opinions, they've identified the range that they need to be in and they're doing a good job keeping it there. They, they might go a little bit low with the six billion a little bit high with the nine but for the most part they're, they're keeping a nice tie a um, nice tight um rain on their cash usage so pretty good job for them all right next thing is going to be the current ratios or the ratios for the um coke financial report i do touch on at about probably nine or ten different ratios i touch on i take a look at the i, I take a look at the trends and the analysis for each one um, for this example right here, I start. I might go ahead and do a current ratio analysis for 2016. Current ratio is 1.2%. For um, for the most part, the golden rule for the current ratio is anything above 1.0 says, um, you know, tells us that the company is going to be financially solvent for the next 12 months. And with a 1.2 uh, current ratio, the company is doing pretty good with their current assets as compared to the current liabilities. 2017, they're doing a little bit better. They're not getting too close to 2.0, which tells me that the company is mismanaging. They're holding too much cash. So they're still doing pretty good with that position. However, in 2018 and 2019, it seems like they're having a little bit of a cash crunch here, dropping out of 0 0.87 to 0 0.76. If this trend continued to go lower, <clears throat> it would tell me one of two things again in my most humble of opinions that a the organization is hemorrhaging cash and, and they're, they're they're having some serious problems with their cash management that's why it's dropping through the floor or b the company is optimally using their current assets a lot of organizations that generate cash on a continuous basis walmart mcdonald's those kind of organizations that continually have cash coming in, they're able to run operations and sustain their operations for the long term at current ratios of 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Um, for Coca-Cola, this seems like they, this is not the case. 
their sweet spot seems to be a, between 1.28, 1.34, 1.32, because that's where they were in 2020. So right here, it tells me they have a little bit of a cash issue um, for a couple of years, but they were able to rebound it, whether it's taken, um, taken on debt, because goodness knows they're definitely not generating it from revenues because the revenues are declining for the last five years. So they might have taken on debt or they might have reissued some stock. Whatever they did, they, they took some actions to improve their cash position, their current ratio position, and that's what they did. So they responded accordingly. And so in the future, as investors, I'd keep a you know, close eye on this current ratio. If it starts to fall again, then the company may have a harder time generating the revenues needed to, to bump up their cash or bump up their current ratio position. All right, so hopefully this information was helpful. And if y'all would like to go ahead and purchase my Coke Financial Report, all you got to do is zip on over to my website at qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash coca-cola financial statement and financial ratios analysis and i'm um, just you know on that website you do have the opportunity to purchase a coca-cola um, financial um, report and i do also provide some more insights into the financial statements the income statement the balance sheet and also uh, some glimpses into the analysis of some of the financial ratios so hopefully this information was helpful if you liked it please give me a thumbs up on youtube and as always have a fantastic day thank you